In this session, we're going to talk about color space and linearization. Color space defines how the footage was captured or exported based on a curve or a lookup. Most of the files that we work with are nonlinear, and knowing the correct color space is critical for proper linearization. Linearization is the process of converting footage into linear space. Nuke is inherently linear, and all of the tools are doing their math in a linear space. So it's really important to be properly linearized, but this also allows Nuke to use different media from different sources because each media gets linearized as it's worked on. First, let's talk about the setup. So if you open your project settings and you go to color, each project has its own color space settings. This is where we kind of set up some of the defaults. If we're working in non-default, we're working in ACES or we're working in some other color space as pre-configed by a config file, that's where you would do it. And you can see here we can change our color management from Nuke to OCIO. OCIO is open color, and that's more of a industry standard adopted by a few other applications as well. The color tab in our project settings also gives us some default options for different file types. We'll talk about that in just a minute. And it also shows us our linearization curves. So linear, you can see, is a flat linear curve. Things like sRGB and REC have a little bit of a curve. And when you look at things like log, you can see those have a more aggressive curve. So that's color space here. Let's talk about it in terms of compositing. Most of the time you're gonna hear it described as log or raw or linear. So what we're dealing with there is log footage. Most of the time we're gonna be dealing with some kind of footage that isn't linear. Almost all the time we're gonna be dealing with something that's not linear. That footage is either gonna be in sRGB space, Rec 709 space, or one of the varieties of logarithmic space. Typically, when we look at a log image, and this is an example, this is S-Log3, shot on a Sony camera. If you load in a log image, it looks really flat. It's really milky, the saturation's really low, the black point and the white point are very close together. When you look at a linear image, or a linearized image, it's going to look closer to real life. You know, the saturation's going to be similar to what you would see with your own eye. Black point and white point are going to be much further spread apart. You know, it's, it's more contrasty, it's richer. Let's talk about the math about that first. So here we have some gradients. And this top is a linear gradient. And what that means is our, our point on the left here is 0, and our point on the right is 1. And every pixel between here and there is linearly connected. So if we go halfway in the middle, that's 0.5. If we're a quarter of the way in, it's 0.25 in terms of the value. You can actually see this in the viewer here. So when we talk about linearizing, the first thing we actually need to talk about is the viewer. The viewer has its own viewer processes, and those can be found here in the top left. You see the little sRGB button. So we have a different, couple different options here. What this represents is what our viewing device's color space is. So in this case, I'm actually using an sRGB computer monitor. Most computer monitors are sRGB or is close to it. Uh, you do occasionally bump into monitors that are Rec. 709 and occasionally some Rec. 1886 monitors. But for this, what you want to know is that you want to pick the color space that matches the output of your viewing device. So in this case, we're using I'm using an sRGB monitor, so we're going to use an sRGB inverse lookup. And what that's doing, and I'll show you really quick, is it's applying a curve. And it's actually, if you look at our sRGB curve here on the right, it's applying the inverse curve. So what it's doing it is it's taking this sRGB curve, applying the opposite, and now the result is a linear curve. And that's where Nuke is doing its work. The viewer needs to invert that so that we can see it properly because linear doesn't look correct to our eye if we look at it you know, as flat linear. And you can see here, now that we look at our curve, our black to white moves really smoothly across that gradient. If we flip this back to sRGB, you can see the white's now stretching down a little deeper to the left than it was before. And if we look at our sRGB ramp, 
you can see that now it looks very linear from left to right. And that's exactly what we're talking about. The sRGB curve that's being applied to the pixels is being inverted by the viewer. And so that gives us a really linear look here. I've also added a Cineon look up here. And this is just to show you the difference of how Cineon is compared to sRGB. You can see our whites start earlier and we really drop down into the darks faster. And you can see that represented here. So our white point has moved down a little lower. And now when we're looking at log footage, we also have values higher than one. And so our values higher than one would be represented in this area. And then you can see that it's really smoothing out across the bottom here, expanding our blacks, making everything a little more rich, a little more contrasty. And that's exactly what we see when we look at this log image. And then when we properly linearize it, you can see that the black areas and the white areas are being expanded and therefore become a little more rich and contrasty and look the way they ought to look. So that's linear and log.